another episode of Computer Chronicles. I'm Derek Smith, your host. When we first started building computers, everybody kind of wondered how we were going to cool our systems. Overclocking was new, and we knew that we needed like extra help with cooling our processors. And so it came to the fact that you either had to go two ways. You went water or you went air. And there really became like almost like two sides, like AMD and Intel or like uh, NVIDIA and Radeon. There has just always been like a spy versus spy in the computer market. And I'm just wanting to talk about um, air versus water and where you should be with it. You know, is it for you? Do you have the wallet? for you know a custom radiator and nice res and a huge uh, motor to run it all you know and and do you have these really really nice water blocks that goes on your CPU now here is my favorite this is a danger den AMD series water cooler from back during the 939 series of AMD motherboards. This is probably going to be a collector's item one day. I just keep it just to have it. I love it. Uh, it was one of the very first CPU blocks and I just love it. But I was the air guy for a long time. I used this silent square from ASUS. You notice that it's been custom painted. I painted it. Um, it went with my system but look at the heat pipes here the heat pipes are probably like five four millimeters look at the new ones now this is the be quiet and let me tell you these are eight millimeter heat pipes uh, they're huge and when I was looking and they said oh this is not that great of a cooler compared to what we used to have that is an amazing cooler. And then you got the Cooler Master V8. I mean, you could cool a small aircraft with these things. I mean, this has got the vapor chamber technology, uh, which it's got some kind of vapor in it and it goes up inside and then it cools off and it comes back down and everything else. Who knows how it really works? But, you know, it is nice. It also requires uh, a big budget. Here's the thing, if you're not going to overclock and you're not going to have your CPU, if it comes with a regular cooler, then, you know, use it. There's nothing wrong with using the stock cooler unless you've got uh, a problem with a fan that's making too much noise or it's just not cooling off well. And this depends a lot on ambient temperature of the room. It also depends on the case that you have. Is the case closed up? Do you have enough fans going into the case? You know, there's a lot of things that go on. So, you know, do you want to go water or do you want to go air? Well, you know, when it all comes down to it, um, well, I was an air guy for a long time and I've gone to the all-in-one solutions. I love the Corsair H100. Uh, it does fine for my uh, 4930K, and I love it. Uh, it's plug and play. You leave it alone, you don't have to worry about it. It's uh, taken care of. But a lot of people would just laugh about that because they want to spend the $300, $400, $500 for the custom cooling systems. That's fine nothing wrong with that at all in fact i actually love looking at some of richard kears geister or some of the other guys when they put these water coolers together just i'm amazed especially the french guys the french guys they, they look like they make little channels out of the plexiglass it's amazing but you know it's art and if you want to do art that's the way you do it it's kind of hard to do art with this unless you want to paint like a mural on it. But these are awesome coolers. If you need to get 
a cooler these days, there are so many to choose from. It's really hard to go wrong. Most of the ones that are terrible have already been kind of thrown to the side. So really, you can't really go wrong. You really just have to really decide what you want, what you need. Are you going to overclock? Do you want something pretty? Do you want to really just blow somebody's mind when they look at it? Or do you really need that kind of cooling? And if you really need that kind of cooling, it's out there. 360 radiators, 480 radiators. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. But this is what it takes the most of. If you've got an empty wallet like I do, well, you know, you kind of have to go with whatever you can go with. But if you got the money to spend and you want to go custom cooling, man, there's no... EK is wonderful, Coolants, all these other companies are really awesome. So the thing is, is really air or water, air or water. One thing good about air is it doesn't have any fluid in it. So the fluid doesn't drip out, go on any kind of electrical products and short it out, which can happen rarely, not very often at all though. But what about water cooling? Water cooling is one of these sustained things where if you need to keep something cool that's hot for a long period of time, air cooling can sometimes lose its ability to cool over time just because the heat's coming in faster than the cooling. Whereas with the water cooling, the radiator is cooling that water off no matter how hot it is and coming back down there and cooling that chamber back up again and it can keep it cooler for a lot longer if you wanted to keep it going for 10 years solid that would be i would i would want to do a water cooler of course if the pump went out ah, you'd be better with the air you know it just depends on what you want or there is a best for every system but every system is different so do you want to go with air or do you want to go with water? I mean, things have changed since I got started a long time ago. This was a nice system and this was new technology. And now we've got these super huge piped, triple fan, double fan LED beauties and these cover all your memory and and it's so quiet you can't even hear it uh and will cool just about anything you want to cool off uh, you can do it all so who wins in the air versus the water you do this is derek smith for another computer chronicles Thanks for watching. Happy modding and God bless.